Today, I will discuss firewall management, IP addressing, management ports, default configuration, graphical user interface, XML API, resetting firewall to the default config, and basic firewall configuration. Palo Alto hardware offers two main access options, the dedicated management interface and the console port. Most hardware devices are pre-configured with IP address of 192.168.1.1/24, but virtual firewalls like the one here in my EVNG lab use DHCP on the management interface. The console port equipped with the RJ45 connection comes in handy when you need to tweak the default settings such as changing the IP address or setting the management interface to DHCP. The console port serial configuration is set to 9600 and the factory default credentials are admin for both the username and the password. Once you log into the firewall GUI for the first time, you will be prompted to change the password for the admin account and that is highly recommended security measure. Moving on to accessing the firewall. The most preferable method is through the graphical user interface or GUI. One significant advantage of Palo Alto Firewall is that GUI remains consistent across all platforms whenever it is the, the smallest or the largest data center firewall. And the same goes for virtual firewalls and panoramas. The second access option is the classic command line interface or CLI, which can be accessed via the console port, SSH or Telnet. Just be careful, Telnet is unsecure. The default CLI output is an XML format, but you can easily switch to set format. So let's log in and compare the two. After successful login, the default format is XML. It is readable for those familiar with the, for example, Juniper configuration. But with a simple command, set CLI config format set, I can switch to set format and vice versa. After you log off and then log back in, the config output will be set back into XML. Here we can see difference between both config outputs, showing the same configuration section. It's up to every engineer to decide what is the preferable option. Just in graphical user interface, where you display configuration snap snapshot, for example, when you review commit configuration, the configuration is always in XML format. Just remember, if you make changes, any changes to the firewall configuration via CLI, whatever, whether it is XML or set format, you need to commit the configuration. I will leave the link at the end of this video for my last video about tips for committing configuration. The last option for accessing the firewall is through REST API. To access it, use the IP address of the firewall followed by forward slash and API. This will display all the API option for the Palo Alto firewall. Additionally, I use Ansible for configuration. So it's not dedicated method since it uses SSH. However, it is quite popular option. You could check out my previous videos for more on Ansible and Palo Alto tips. Now let's talk about resetting firewall to default settings. If you don't know the admin password, you can reset during the boot up by connecting to the file via console cable, typing main and selecting reset to factory default. If you do know the password but want to reset the firewall to its default configuration and remove locks perhaps for using the firewall for different parts of the network, use the command reset system to factory default. Once you have logged into the firewall for the first time, you will probably want to change the management configuration. Head to device setup interfaces management where you can switch from static to DHCP, configure IP details, subnet mask, default gateways, speed and MTU if needed. Choose protocols for admin access, enable services like ping and limit access to the man management interface from specific sources for added layer of security. Under device setup, you will find the option to set the firewall host name, login banner, time zone, latitude and longitude for monitoring purposes. The host name is straightforward. The login banner fulfills usually CISO requirements and latitude and longitude eight in monitoring tabs and traffic maps. Lastly, under the device setup services, you can set up DNS server and update servers. On the second tab, you have the options to configure NTP. 
Both are crucial for the correct operation of the firewall. And there you have it, a comprehensive guide to accessing and managing Palo Alto firewall. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and share it. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.